And a very good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Sandy Elson, and on behalf of the Travel Professional Community and TravelProfessionalNews.com, I want to welcome all of you to today's very exciting and informative webinar. Today, our very own Andy Ogg will be joining us for a fantastic insight into the millennial market. Andy has done extensive research into the millennial, millennial market and will be releasing an upcoming book focused on that topic. The millennial generation is the largest generation in history. And today, Andy will share with you some research and insights, as well as some tricks and tips to help you grow your business by adding millennial clientele. Andy is the editor of Travel Professional News, as well as the sales and marketing director for TravelProfessionalNews.com, FindAHostTravelAgency.com, HomeBasedTravelAgent.com, and TravelProfessionalCommunity.com. Please remember that you are all muted, but we welcome your questions. You can type in your questions at any time in the question area you see on the right-hand panel of your screen. When Andy's presentation is over, we'll take as many questions as we can. So let's get to all of this wonderful information about growing your business with millennials. Andy, take it away. Thank you so much, Sandy. And thanks for taking the time out of your day to, to help, me, uh, help me do this webinar. Um, first and foremost, thank you all for taking the time out of your day to be here. Uh, millennials are a really exciting topic and, uh, and a market that just keeps getting uh, more and more attention. So it's really uh, an advantageous time to take advantage of it, uh, you know, expand your education and, and grow your business. Um, so again, my name is Andy Ogg. I really appreciate you all being here. If you guys have any moments after this webinar, we're going to try to keep it a little on the shorter side so you can eat your lunch without hearing my voice. Uh, take a check-in and, and visit any one of our websites that we, uh, that we uh, provide for you guys. All of them are fantastic resources for a travel professional. Uh, so let's get started. So let's talk about the first one. Who are they? What is a millennial? Um, that's a phenomenal question because the word itself is getting said, but let's find out who we're talking about. A millennial is typically born between 1980 and 1983. Uh, myself, I was born in 1983, so I'm on the tail end of the millennial generation. Uh, as Sandy mentioned, they are the largest generation ever. We have a, a world of new market coming into play here, new clients, new people spending money, and it's a really exciting time. Um, millennials tend to be unique, uh, unique in their workplace attitude, their political views, technology use and their influence, uh, communication methods, uh, preferences in travel, and even their prioritization of, of life structure. Uh, one of the things I just want to mention real quick is, you know, millennials grew up with technology, uh, the computer, uh, AOL Instant Messenger, uh, all these really important things that were uh, uh, milestones for for a lot of us uh, they grew up with uh, you know the smartphone isn't new to them it's a standard uh, where I still remember not having cell phones so there's a lot of similarities that happen here and it's important to remember that th while this generation is the largest there's a lot of change in it uh, let's talking about Millennials uh, we know kind of a little bit who they are uh, what are their travel trends uh, this is some of the research that's been kind of uh, done here in the past few years and it's really interesting 87% uh, look to social media for travel inspiration. And that can go through Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, there's a world out there of, of photos and information, uh, but they get their idea of, I wanna be sitting on this beach drinking that cocktail from social media, or they wanna go hike this trail and have uh, this, stay in this castle in Ireland. It, it, it's, all, it's all coming from social media. Um, so it's a really great opportunity for you to, to expand that part of your business. 46% uh, book travel through a smartphone or tablet. Um, a strong mo mobile presence is an absolute must. There's no doubt about it. Uh, in this particular research I did, 86% uh, of millennials uh, are disappointed by a bad mobile experience. And we'll touch on that a minute later. But uh, one question I'm going to put out there right now is, is your website mobile friendly? Uh, the follow-up question, if it is, does it work well? Because if it doesn't, that could deserve some attention in 2018. 60% uh, will upgrade their experiences by purchasing extras, uh, in-flight Wi-Fi, drink packages, uh, upgraded transfers. Uh, that's more than half. So it's important for you to make sure that they know all of those options are available and they can get them all through you because we all want commission. So let's, uh, let's make sure you guys do that as well as we're working in this millennial clientele. 97% um, might as well make it 100% will post their experiences on social media. 
uh, if you guys do it right, you build the relationship and everything goes great, you have a reach that is unbelievably strong just by them sharing that they did this experience through you. You're their travel professional. So make sure that you, you know, talk to them. Let them know that you'd really love the, the, the shout out when they share their trip. It's important for you to communicate to that. 68% will remain loyal to a program that offers the best rewards. So um, if you guys don't have a, a referral program or a repeat customer program, it's something that could be really, really great for you as you move into this new market. Uh, it could be something to consider for your next year. This is some research that was done by Alliance uh, Travel Insurance uh, in, in 2017 report. And uh, let me define this first chart here. A sharing economy is any kind of social platform, whether it's a closed community, a neighborhood community, uh, social network, um, whatever it is. But a sharing economy is, is just that. So it's important to see that here. Uh, trust a sharing economy. So that means that they're trusting strangers on Yelp about the uh, uh, Italian place down the street uh, rather than what their mom, dad, friend, uh, wife, whoever else said. Uh, that number is at 83%. That's just huge. Uh, when you go 35 and older, that number drops to 58. And when you look at baby boomers, it drops down to about 16. It's amazing to see what uh, how those millennials are changing the marketplace. Um, use a sharing economy. Post their experiences. Post pictures of their food, which I know all of you are probably sick of seeing, but are guilty of just like me. Um, sharing economies are amazing. 77% want to use it. They want to engage with it and talk about their experiences. Compare that to a 39% with the 35 and older, that number drops down to about a 20% in the uh, baby boomer generation. Um, I think this part's really awesome. So engage with brands on social media. That means Royal Caribbean, Southwest Airlines, uh, you know, Norwegian, anything out there, uh, Sandals Resorts, 78% uh, want to engage with a brand. And I, personally, I just bought a new computer and I, man, I love it. I wanted to say thank you to Apple. So I put a Twitter you know, tweet out there. Thank you so much for making such a great product. Um, and it, it's important, I think, to know that they want to engage with you. They want to engage with the suppliers that you choose to put them on. Um, that number drops to 47, 47% uh, with the 35 and older and down to about a 16 uh, for the baby boomer generation. Um, so these numbers down here, I think, are really important. I personally want to just say that I think they're a little bit off, but I, I, in this particular research, this was accurate. Um, so the millennial income, we're looking at $72,000 compared to the to the older generation at $83,000. Uh, vacation days are, are not too far off, but I will say the vacation spending at $1,300, we just did a, a camping trip, like uh, a camping trip and, and we spent half of that just going on a camping trip so uh, it's not a big budget to make off of but i would also uh i'll touch on this again don't make the assumption that every millennial has this uh, this amount of money to spend some are some are doing very well for themselves so we know a little bit about them we know a little bit about their travel trends um where do you find them and this picture uh is pretty um pretty definitive of, of where we can find them because it seems like wherever you go, if it's a Starbucks, the mall, uh, the park, anywhere, uh, this is what they're doing. A group of friends sitting around together, all engaging with the world, not that they're in, but the world on their phone. So where can you find them? Everywhere. But most of the time, you're going to need to be on top of that screen right there uh, to get in front of their eyes. Millennial communication preferences are very unique um, compared to previous generations. And it's important to note that because it can really help in uh, engage and, and better the relationship from the get-go. So I've made a quick list here, five ways that uh, millennials have, at least in studies, have shown that they prefer their communication methods. Uh, so email, still very popular. It's awesome. It's easy to use, it's effective, and it's very easy to keep track of. Uh, text, um, WhatsApp, iMessage, all these great things that we have on our phones now, these smartphones. Um, I, I remember when texts were limited to about 160 characters. Uh, now we can send PDFs, movies, uh, gosh, whatever, uh, signature documents, private pictures. I mean, you name it, we can do all kinds of stuff. So make sure you know what the capabilities are because it could be a great way to communicate with them. Um, In-app messages and direct messages, and I'm sure most of you have a, a Facebook or an Instagram or a Twitter, and they all have their own messaging service within, um, and they are preferred by millennials. In fact, I work with one company that I only communicate with them through, through Twitter, uh, through Twitter Messenger. They don't ever do email, nothing like that. It's, just, it's a younger company. So uh, it's important for you to have uh, 
one, to make it a routine to check those medians so they don't go two weeks without being read, or two, set up a notification system that works so you can make sure you're reading what's out there. Um, number four, the, a face-to-face -face meeting uh, scheduled, set up at a you know good time. It's, it's great. Millennials be uh, receptive to that. And number five, phone calls. I put the word last resort on there. Um, millennials see phone calls as obtrusive and an inconvenience. Um, if they're scheduled, it's much more open and it's much more positive. But without it being scheduled, a phone ringing just to chat about their upcoming trip uh, is gonna be seen as a negative. So make sure that you respect that. And it's completely different to the baby generation where almost this list is backwards. Uh, you know, phone calls and face-to-face -face were up top. So uh, just some simple notes to, to, to make when you're, when you're starting to expand into this new marketplace. Um, communication methods here. This is another study provided by Alliance Travel Insurance. Um, kind of flip-flops the numbers here. So real face-to-face -face human interaction, 34% for the millennials, uh, 35 and older is up to 47, and baby boomers up to 65. Uh, it's just interesting how these numbers switch, and you can kind of see these for yourself. But the last one here, um, artificial intelligence. It's an exciting thing happening, and I'm sure you guys probably all know about the Amazon Alexa or the Google Home or even the Apple product they just released out a couple months ago. 11% um, of millennials are using it, trusting it, and loving it. Uh, that number is down to 4% for 35 and older and down to a whopping 2% for the baby boomers. Uh, this is going to change our world, and it is already. So make sure you keep an eye on that. Make sure you keep an eye on what this AI technology can do for you and your business. Is uh, setting up a skill with an Amazon Alexa uh, uh, you know, product um, good for your business? Can uh, somebody say, I want to book a trip? How much is a flight to San Francisco? Or how much is a cruise to the Caribbean this weekend? Or, or what have you. But there's a lot of opportunity that's out there, and it's an exciting time. It's like the internet revolution all over again. So we've talked about a little bit about them. We know who they are. We know what some of their preferences are. We know how to talk to them. Let's talk about how to sell to them. Uh, so these are five kind of tips and tricks I've put together to, to help you grow your business. The first one, get tech ready. Um, invest in your success. Get up to date with all the tech devices out there. And I'm not saying you have to go buy the $2,000 iPhone 10, but make sure it's up to date. Make sure it works and make sure it works with all the current applications that are out there. Um, learn how to maximize your investment. I, they aren't paperweights. I, I love that saying because they are very easy to just sit on the table, make phone calls and send text messages and nothing else. Uh, but they are capable of so much more. Uh, so dive into it and really spend time with it. Maximize what you've already spent the money on and get the most out of your buck. Um, mobile friendly is a must. Um, does it work? And I kind of touched on it earlier, but uh, spend some time and really review your mobile uh, friendly site. Uh, if you don't have one, you need one. Uh, if you have one, make sure it works and works great. Um, because I can't tell you that this is a really popular trend here where if it doesn't work, millennials are finding someone else to go to. So uh, invest in your business that way. Open your options to millennials by being active on all the top media, social media and online communities. Uh, there's a lot of applications out there based on community and neighborhoods even. Uh, there's an app called Nextdoor, uh, which ties together your neighbors. Neighbors you've never met before that you live within 100 feet of uh, are all on there talking about common things or speeding cars or kids at play or, hey, I'm having a party just so you guys know. And, and that's a great place for any travel professional to say, hey, if you guys are ever looking to take a trip, I'll check in your house every week, but I'll also make sure you have the best time of your life. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And there's a lot of opportunity out there for any kind of travel professional, no matter what you, your specialty or niche is. Uh, the next tip here, uh, be true, be you. Um, you know, we all know honest integrity is the key to, to any successful business and uh, even more so with millennials. Uh, be straightforward. Uh, don't beat around the bush. If you know, if you're talking up a situation, try to avoid that and let your uh, vacation planning prove itself. Uh, let the experience really tell the story of what you've done for them. Be direct, even if it's not good news. No one loves bad news, but you know what? It's a lot better to have it straightforward and know what the deal is compared to finding out the bad way of how bad it really is. Don't waste their time. And I think this goes across the world, any generation. No one wants their time wasted. Millennials are really, really sowing some firmness on this. Uh, so if it can't happen, shoot them straight, but provide possible options. Hey, you know, this transfer got canceled, but we can get you on this one and it's only uh, $4 more and it'll get you to the same places. Be straight up with them and I think it'll be very, very beneficial for you guys. 
under promise and over deliver. I love this saying. I, I live my life by this motto. Um, you know, tell them you're giving the best example or the best trip, but let them find out for themselves. If they're going to an all-inclusive resort, yeah, it's great. It's beautiful. You're going to love it. When they walk on there and it's exactly what they wanted, that experience is going to really, really solidify the relationship with you and what they're going to say to their friends, colleagues, and family about what you've done for them. Craft an experience that hits their checklist with the opportunities to do more. Um, so if you have a millennial client that wants to go to an all-inclusive resort, um, you know, but you also know they love food, maybe pro provide some local restaurants local to that resort that they can check out. Obviously not going to make any money on it, but again, you go back to crafting that experience, that experience and that extra amount of uh, customer service you provided is going to be very, very well appreciated by uh, a millennial client. Uh, the last one here, uh, respond quickly, and I kind of touched on that a moment ago, but um, patience is not a virtue that most millennials have. And in an age where technology has been a heavy influence in their life and everything's coming instantly, um, it's important for you to be quickly, uh, quick at responding. Um, if you wait a day or two, someone submits a contact us form and you don't get back to them within a couple of days, they probably aren't, haven't waited. They probably have moved on. So take that opportunity. Make sure that you have all your notifications set up and you're maximizing every reach you can get. Respect equals referrals. Uh, millennials are showing some very positive influences on what they can do, and it's all based around that social media aspect. I went on, I went up to Alaska on a on a week cruise, and I had the best time in my life. And if you haven't gone, you need to call, um, you know, Betty Lou Travel Agency because she did everything I wanted, and I got to do everything I wanted to do. Uh, so make sure you show that, uh, show that respect to them. Um, they share it, it's 100% true. Uh, treat each millennial, no matter the budget, like the top customer. It will pay for itself in the long haul. And I have a personal story uh, in my previous career, I was doing fantastic, uh, you know, making great money. I was gonna go buy a new, new truck. I needed a new truck to tow my trailer and I was gonna go buy a new truck. I had the cash for it and I walked onto the lot and I'm not a very fancy dresser, uh, wear a white t-shirt from Costco and, uh, and the guy assumed I had nothing. So he lost a, a cash sale that would have probably been the easiest deal of his life. I went to another dealership, the guy was awesome and he got the sale. So don't make the assumption that just because they might look different, they might have different preferences, they might be unique, uh, that they don't have money to spend and they don't have the ability to really invest in the experiences that you're crafting for them. Get to know them and that's easier than ever. Uh, you know, back in the day, you'd have to follow people around, right? Uh, now you can go on social media and hey, look, these guys are at a brewery every uh every every weekend i bet they really love their beer maybe i can throw that into their vacation package maybe in the into the planning or do they love food are they into uh you know the arts or adventures or camping or luxury um you know finding that information out is easier than ever it just takes a little bit of your time a little bit of research and being able to craft an experience that really suits their needs the last uh, last tip here is, is show the love um millennials prefer service and relationship over cost uh, it's a bit different than previous generations, and I personally stand right behind this one. Um, I have a realtor that's uh, 72 years old, um, no way near a millennial, and I would never stray from him because he has never done me wrong. He's always been straightforward and respectful. Uh, he has my business until he's uh, moved on to retirement. Um, so, you know, making sure that you provide great customer service goes a long way with millennials, um, even more so than the cost. Uh, one great way to say thank you, complimentary upgrades, drink packages, tour op, you know, tour operations. Um, you know, you can spend a little bit with them, and it's going to make a huge impact on their on their experience and the service that you've provided. Uh, don't hesitate to show them the appreciation. Um, so, real quickly, we're kind of uh, towards the end here. Just so you all know, I'm going to talk about just uh, some millennial focused travel, and, and this is literally from my own experience nothing that they, that these people are or they don't even know i'm talking about them um but the first experience we went on this in october it's called the groove cruise and it's done by uh jason bukima at wet travel uh he started off doing group travel you know 15 20 100 people he now charters entire ships and it's a music festival at sea and it's electronic dance music which isn't for everyone but he's got a salsa music theme and he's got uh you know heavy metal theme he's got all these great cruises that he does catered around music uh, we went on it, and we were on the older scale of the crowd. Um, and uh, it, But it's a phenomenal thing he's done because he's targeted millennials to a T, and he fills a ship with them every event. 
Um, I suggest you look into them because it's a fantastic offer and he pays 10% commission and it will not hurt you to know about it. Um, it's a great offering and it's easy to do. Um, we have a video of our experience, me and my wife's experience. It's on our YouTube channel, also on travelprofessionalnews.com. I took it out of here just to save some time, but if you want to see it, feel free to check it out. Um, the next one I can kind of touch on real quick, and this is really exciting, is you by Uniworld, um, which is owned by uh, the Travel Corporation. Um, these guys have crafted a, uh, taken a river ship and painted it black and completely customized every single lounge and experience, guest room and common area to be focused on millennials. Uh, very art uh, focused, music, uh, luxury experiences that are truly uh, angled straight at millennials. So if you don't know about it, you need to look into it because these are fantastic offerings that would be an easy fit for most of your possible millennial clients that are out there. Uh, thank you for, for joining me today. This is short, sweet, to the point. I hope you guys have learned something from this. And I have my contact information displayed here on the screen. Please has, don't hesitate to reach out. Shoot me an email if you have any stories, any experiences, or any questions. I'd love to, love to help you guys out in any way I can. Um, and I hope that this uh, at least initiates the thought process of how you can grow your business uh, with this very, very, very massive generation that's coming to market uh, with money. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. That was phenomenal. You really gave us a good insight into the um, workings in the minds of millennials. And, and, uh, and they really are not only a large generation, but uh, quite a different generation than mine. For example, I'm a baby boomer, and all of those statistics you quoted were absolutely true in my experience. Um, we have a couple of questions I hope we can get to before we let our agents go, because um, they're, they're very relevant. Um, do you have any, t you mentioned that some of the millennials are doing really well above and beyond the, um, the average income that you posted for that group. Do you have any tips about finding millennials who might fall into a luxury category rather than, you know, something like the rave cruise? Well, uh, you know, I, as far as tips, you know, I mean, I think you can probably find a lot of them on the social media outlets. Uh, most, at least, I, I don't have the statistics to prove this, um, but I, I'm working on it. Uh, but a lot of millennials show a lot of favoritism to entrepreneurship. Uh, so whether they own their own business, started their own business, or managing their own business, um, that could be a really great insight. So maybe visiting your local, uh, you know, your local uh, town business meetings or your commerce meetings, your commerce chambers, and, and seeing if there's any connections there. Um, but also, you know, there are definitely just like in any generation, there's successful people, and then there's people that are, are really working for that success. Um, keeping your eye out and then maybe trying to do some networking in local communities would be a great, great possible tip. Fabulous. That's wonderful. Um, and let's take one more question. You mentioned that uh, millennials tend to book their travel online, so many of them online on um, smartphones or tablets. How do you get them to work with a travel agent and w with an agency rather than just doing it themselves? How do you demonstrate I your value? I think that a, I think all of that comes into the fit and finish and the branding that you've created. Um, you know, uh, submitting a contact form online is, is very easy to do nowadays. And if you can, you know, reach out to that person who submitted that contact form within 15 minutes and get to them, I mean, I, I don't think there's gonna be any hesitation for them to not look any further, they need to go on, you know, any of these OTAs to, to book their travel when they've got someone contacting them immediately. Um, I think that the, the, the real value that a travel professional has toward a millennial is expertise and providing the exact exact desired vacation. So telling, you know, showing your uni unique value proposition is uh, not only do I craft the experience, but I show you all the things that you can do on top of that. Um, and I take care of it from A to B. You have a question? No problem. If you have a problem on your trip, text me. I'm here for you. Uh, that's the kind of service that a millennial really will respond with. Um, and I think that it, for someone, for most of you listening right now, it's probably just a normal day for you. Uh, as, as you guys run successful businesses, I think it's going to be not a big change, but just maybe a change in the communication method, uh, but also maybe refocusing on your UVP, uh, on your niche, on your specialty, because we all know that that's where uh, the growth of uh, travel business seems to be happening right now. A great answer. Um, you mentioned that they're all on social media. If uh, agents are on social media on Facebook, for example, but not doing so much on Twitter or Pinterest, one of our agents wants to know if 
a little bit on those social media sites is okay, or are they better just not even attempting it and just sticking to Facebook? So here's an interesting uh, fact. So two weeks ago, I had a call with a uh, master's uh, a student uh, st finishing up his master's dissertation at UCLA, and he's studying travel influence on uh, the millennial marketplace. Um, he uh, reported to me, this is not a, an official finding, that uh, upwards of 40% of millennials are disembodying from Facebook. Um, and Facebook has become overwhelmingly populated with baby booming generations. Uh, so uh, the millennial marketplace are taken to other avenues such as Twitter, such as Instagram, Snapchat, uh, all these other ones that we have out there now. Um, so Facebook is fantastic, don't get me wrong. Um, but if you're going for the millennials, it may not hurt to take a month or two out of your 2018 year and say, hey, you know, for this month, I'm going to let Facebook chill. Uh, I'm going to go hit up Twitter and I'm going to try to to really dive in and see if I can make some progress there uh, just to span across the, you know, uh, across the medians. Um, Facebook is definitely the uh, quote unquote, you know, master of social media. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, millennials are, are finding different ways to to communicate and connect with each other besides that platform. So um, that's important to know as well. Well, that is fantastic information. We do have other questions. I want to um, tell our agents that if you have a question that we didn't get to, or if you think of something after this webinar is over, Andy has provided his um, contact information. And I know, Andy, you said you're you welcome people to uh, email you with questions and comments about this. And uh, Andy will be seeing the comments that were made in the question box. So if you if you uh, had a, a, a question or something um, that wasn't answered, Andy will see it. And Andy, I'm happy to tell you, you're also going to see a lot of compliments to you <laughs> on this wonderful cool. presentation. So so. <laughs> I really appreciate everyone taking the time. And Sandy, thank you so much for your uh, awesome hosting and being such a, a valued partner to us. And uh, thank you all for coming and, and being a part of this. I really appreciate it. And I'll add my thank you to you, Andy. Um, uh, for this wonderful presentation and uh, to our agents who took time out of their day to be with us today. So thank you, Andy. Thank you, everybody. And uh, have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you, thank you all.